Anunnaki and Atlanteans are really, in my opinion, the same exact people. And that's Billy Carson's opinion. I'm not saying that's a stated fact anywhere. A lot of people always want to ask, well, where was Atlantis? You know, was it this ring city in the Atlantic Ocean? Was it in Greece? Was it in, in the Mediterranean? Where was it? And my answer is, Atlantis is everywhere. We are all standing and sitting on Atlantis at this ex exact moment. Atlantis was this entire planet. The ring city, in my opinion, was just one of many capitals on Earth. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about the Enuma Elish, the seven tablets of creation to start off. And what you need to understand is the Enuma Elish is an ancient cuneiform group of tablets that really talk about the creation of our solar system, the very, very beginnings of the whole thing, how we even got here. And this was copied over and over again onto actually stone tablets that go back, in my opinion, hundreds of thousands of years, okay? Hundreds of thousands, not 8,000, not 6,000, hundreds of thousands. These are recopies after recopies. Somebody sits there with a, with a stylus and re-wedges in all these cuneiform texts into new stones over and over again to make sure that the next generations to come have a copy of this story. Now, a lot of people have heard about the Sumerian tablets and they've also heard about Zachariah Sitchin. I think Zachariah Sitchin was one of the greatest researchers probably ever. And the reason why is because he did something a lot of people didn't do. He went and put his effort into trying to put the pieces of the puzzle together. What the thing that got misconstrued with him is people thought he was the only person that can decipher these tablets. That's false. But as a matter of fact, Zachariah Sitchin didn't decipher or interpret any tablets. What he did was he took existing translations that already existed and put together his own stories. Unfortunately, later on in his life, he was vilified and it was said that he was the only person that can read him and nobody knew what these things actually said. But if you look at his books, he gives you his source almost at every paragraph, okay? So the reason why I bring this up in the beginning is so that people who are sitting here with this precognition of Zachariah Sitchin, maybe this whole thing is just some made up hoopla of some stone tablets. I'm here to tell you that this stuff was translated before he was even born. These translations are ancient in my opinion because we're talking about 17 and 1800s, these, the, the tablets were already translated. So just wipe that misrepresentation out of your brain as I go through this. These are the actual tablets. These are the, the Enuma Elish and the seven tablets of creation. What you'll find is that the Bible is mostly this text right here. Dividing the waters from the Genesis is mostly here. Dividing, separating the waters from the waters, uh, you know, the creation of man in our image, all of that really in the creation of the earth, the solar system, it's all in these tablets right here. It's a real amazing story. Even the then preceding enslavement of mankind is also in these texts as well. And the reason for the enslavement is there as well. If you're wondering how can you be sure that these texts are accurate, because Billy's up here talking, we don't even know if he knows what these texts say. Anybody can go to the CDLI online cuneiform digital library. It's hosted by UCLA and you can actually translate the stone tablets for yourself. You can take a tablet off the virtual shelf and drop it into an online translator and read it for yourself and come up with your own conclusion. What you'll find, just like I did, is that after many, many uh, decades, really, of reading and studying and researching these tablets, all the different people that have researched them have a very similar story. Not the exact story, but the fundamental basis, the foundation of the story is always the same. People from somewhere else came to this planet began to, to work on this planet and create a breakaway civilization. And then at some point, they engaged the existing hominid on this planet, genetically tinkered with us, and turned us into a worker slave for them for a period of time. Now we're just like an abandoned seed colony here and we're just hanging out and we're trying to find our way. But there's hope for us. Now what's interesting about this and what really is important about this is to understand in this time frame when these tablets were being copied and created, People didn't have time to become George Lucas, right? They, they weren't inspired by George Lucas to create these incredible sci-fi movies on tablets. These people were, were scribing specifically what they were told to write by their God or their Lord or their master, or they were writing what they were experiencing themselves at that time. Now, I don't know if you've ever seen how to write cuneiform. It's very, very <laughs> tedious. You, you don't really have time to sit there and, and take out a stone tablet and start wedging in all this text just to make up an incredible sci-fi story. In my opinion, what they wrote was probably as close to the truth as we're possibly going to get. 
So what's interesting, during this time and a few million years ago, the Anunnaki had this race of beings called the Ejiji. They're mentioned in the Enuma Elish and the Atra Hasis. And also what's interesting is the word, the name Anunnaki and Nibiru in the older version of the Enuma Elish, those words, are, those names are actually in the text. So for some people that were saying, oh, this, nobody can ever find these names. In a newer version of the Enuma Elish, uh, Marduk, also known as Amun-Ra, he wanted to be the one that destroyed uh, Tiamat, so he changed the name Nibiru to his name, Marduk. His name is in the Bible, his name is in the Jewish Torah. He's a very popular guy, but also a very evil and brutal guy, okay? But these Ijiji were, um, were doing a lot of the work when they created this breakaway civilization. They came here, they found that this planet was a great planet to, to, to start a civilization, to build and live on. They actually worked this planet themselves. They actually didn't even use human beings or our hominid cousins at the time. They weren't homo sapien yet. But these Ijiji people, these were like the working level class Anunnaki, and they were doing the trenching and the digging and the making the canals and, and all this stuff, mining and everything. They started getting tired of this. They were working on Earth and they were working on Mars. And what's interesting is these people were up there mining and working, but they said the conditions were harsh. They complained to Enki and Lil and Anu who were the kings of Earth, pretty much, and their calls for help were ignored. Like, hey, we need, some, we need a break, we need a vacation. One of the biggest complaints, they didn't have any women. And that's a tough complaint, man, I, I, I feel for them. I'm out here sweating and it's dry, I got no water and there's no women. So they came to Earth and said, look, we gotta, we gotta get some women and we gotta get some rest. So they came to Earth and they actually encircled the camp of, um, this is in the Enuma Elish, they encircled the camp of Enki and Lil and Anu and they found that their, their, their guards let them know that, hey, we're, we've been encircled, we've been basically boxed in here. And there was a call to go for war against them. And uh, they started negotiating to try to not have this war because they were more Ijiji than them. And Enki makes a decision. He says, you know what? I have an idea. There's an existing being on this planet. We can add our essence to it. That's a genetic modification. And we can get them to do the work have them do the load, work the load, do the labor, do the heavy labor for us, do the toil. And so that decision was made and agreed upon, and it happened. And then those Ijiji, they took some women, I said major, they did that, they took some women and took them back with them. So that's where the sons of God made it with the daughters of men. And now we have the situation is where we've been fully engaged on this planet, but at some point there was a catastrophe. And this is where Thoth comes into play. Thoth is an Atlantean priest king. The Egyptians know him as, as uh, as, as Hermes, oh, well, the Greeks know him as Hermes, but the Egyptians know him as Thoth, Tehuti, Tehuti, Jehudi, to the Africans, okay? He's uh, basically one of the most, at the time, the most intelligent people on the planet. He taught languages to everybody. And what happened is there was a great flood before he went on this mission. And after this great flood, his father, Enki, who was also known as Thought Me, told him, go back to uh, the land of the hairy barbarians and rebuild civilization. In other words, he didn't say that civilization needed to be started there. They had already raised everybody up to a high level. They had already created basically almost heaven on earth by the labor between the Ijiji and the humans. And then they had this big catastrophe. And the mission that Enki sent them on was to bring back civilization to the planet after this global flood. Whatever this catastrophe was, it's not really truly clear exactly what it was, but it did happen. So he gets into his ship, it says, he gets into the great ship of the master. It didn't say he sailed out. It said he rose into the sky until the planet disappeared, until he got to the uh, place that he was uh, basically his destination for his mission. And then he said he saw the great temple coming out of the mud beneath him. That means the thing is in the sky. And he descended on the land of Kim. When he descended down to the ground, he opened his doors. All this, what I'm telling you, is in my book, Compendium of the Emerald Tablets. And this exact quote that I'm giving you comes from the Emerald Tablets of Thoth, which is an ancient text that dates back over 36,000 years. He drops his door down, him and his crew come out of the ship. All, he says the hairy barbarians came to attack him with cudgels and spears. And he said he, he raised his staff and he sent out a ray of vibration, striking him still as fragments of stone in the mountain. He froze them in place with a beam weapon 36,000 years ago. High tech, high tech weaponry 36, that didn't injure them, didn't kill them, but stopped them from attacking. We have something similar right now. It's called the active denial system in the military. If you look at military active denial system, we have a device that sends out a beam. And so if somebody's coming to attack an area, rioters or whatever, they can send a beam at you that will make you stop, make you think you're on fire, make you vomit, make you sick, 
make you scream, make you have voices in your head. It's called the act of denialysis, and we have the same exact technology now. We just rediscover what he already had. And what's interesting is he said then he built the Great Pyramid. He claimed to have built, now he, not with his own hands, okay? But he, had, he was the master architect for this structure on planet Earth, and then told his, once they rebuilt the land of Kem, which is Egypt before it was called Egypt, then he told his crew, he said to them, now go around the planet and duplicate what we did here. This is why when you look at this planet, no matter where you go, you're going to find similar st structures, the similar construction techniques, the same type of uh, tool markings. You're going to find the same types of pyramids, all the similarities, because why? You had one master architect, and this was the mission that Thoth was on. He was the master architect post-diluvial. He was the master architect that rebuilt life, uh, rebuilt civilizations on this planet. And who was Thoth? He was an uh, Atlantean priest king. If you like this video and you want to see more amazing content, go ahead and check out the next video on our channel.